guys. Let me cut. I actually plan to be there physically, but circumstances is making me do this virtual. I want to align myself with the established protocol of the day. I'm going to share my PowerPoint presentation with two. Just give me a second while I share my file. As you can see, we are all in AC Conference, Rebecca 2021. And I want to start with self introduction. My name is Josephine Olatomi Shoboyejo. I have a PhD in philosophy of religion and theology from Ajayi Crowder University, Oyo, Nigeria. I live in Austin, Georgia, United States of America. But my origin is from Yoruba land, which we call Yoruba Kingdom of the Southwest Nigeria. The title of my paper is African Indigenous Knowledge Systems, AIKS, and Post-Pandemic Predictive Significance, PPPS, to Nigeria Democracy. Traditional Africa relates life experiences to non-living and living things. The Africa holy writs are the power behind our folk tales and mostly all our historical renditions. Relation of life experiences is behind African doctrines, sets of rules and law that we have in Africa. The statement of problem, we know that globally, economies of nations have been negatively impacted by COVID-19. And most countries are battling seriously with the predictive post-pandemic. For African countries, they are even lucky they are not as badly hit as most Western countries. But the endemic poverty in most of these African countries even make it worse for the COVID-19 consequences. And the failure of Africa to produce vaccine is a problem. The democratic institution in Nigeria is battling horrifying insecurity and declining financial strength. Virtually all institutions in Nigeria of government are corrupt. And the immense financial democratic structures that are in place contribute to the stalling of Nigeria's developmental progresses. Nigeria is, for, is now facing threat to its existence and a futuristic collapse. The current democratic system is not conducive to AIK's accountability and financial aspirations. So the objectives of this paper are to survey the challenge of COVID-19 and the consequences that the pandemic has on Nigeria. Integrate African indigenous knowledge system into the Nigerian democracy in order to improve the relevance to the citizens who have lost faith in the system. AIK is as a holistic community-based nature and approach to core values. Then provide solutions to remedy the collapse of the country. The paper is providing to provide a post-pandemic democratic framework that can work in Nigeria with the sole aim of providing a unified country for all ethnic groups, because currently the country is not really united. And examine the global effect of Zoom technology and virtual mode. Tango for Zoom, I'm able to virtually attend this conference. 
The paper anchor on four germane points. The very first one is the African indigenous knowledge systems. The second is the Nigerian democracy. The third is the pandemic and all its consequences. And the fourth is post-pandemic predictive significance to Nigerian democracy. The methodology employed in writing this paper includes sociological, phenomenological, and historical approaches. Traditional experience, indigenous knowledge, and local institutions are fundamentals for African social transformation in any sound democracy. So talking about AIKS, Africanism affirms negritude. It's a total attitude of response to a situation. An African man as a frank phenomenon of human being, society, the universe, experiences, rules, laws, and problems, and problems such as the problem of evil, problem of diseases, sickness, life, and death, knowledge, marriage, destiny, and so on. And that is why an African man, before embarking on anything, we consult the oracle, which we call Ifa. So AIKS contextualizes African traditional religion, or we say African indigenous religion, which takes its roots from the foundations of ethnic, racial, tribal, cultural principles. And these principles, they form the fundamental core of African reality that manifest in their beliefs, value responses to the physical and spiritual realms. I come from the Yoruba kingdom, Yoruba land in Southwest Nigeria. We have core values. And maybe at the end of this paper, I'll be able to share with you some of those core values. Let's look at Nigerian democracy. The Federal Republic of Nigeria is over 100 years old now. But the Nigerian democracy is strangulated culturally, religiously, and militarily. The political structure and the political system are not conducive to any democratic accountability and financial aspirations. In the past, all the ethnic groups in Nigeria were governed by sets of rules, character traits, and belief systems. They've jettisoned that now. Lugard was the governor of the two protectorates, the North and the Southern in 1912. But by 1920, 1914, he amalgamated the two protectorates into one and called it Nigeria. It's an holy marriage, an unworkable marriage. Nigeria is presently the fourth republic. We started in 1999. And Mohamed Buhari is the 15th president. He took office on May 29, 2015. Let's look at pandemic and its consequences. Pandemic, as we all know, it's a global outbreak of diseases. And the most recent is COVID-19. But pandemic is not new. It is ancient. In fact, the Bible uses plagues and pestilence for pandemic. When you read through Leviticus 26, 16, the NIV, we say, I will bring you sudden terror, wasting diseases and fever that will destroy your sight and drain away from your life. From this verse, you will know at times God permits pandemic to happen for certain reasons. And before COVID-19, there has been 20 most virulent pandemics in the world that have changed human history, dating from prehistoric to modern times, according to the Life Science Online site. And the consequences of COVID-19 are seen in the number of cases uh, and deaths, so many deaths. As of October 29, 2021, when I check, almost 7 million vaccine doses have been administered. And more are still being administered. 
Let's look at pandemic and the consequences it has on, in Nigeria. Nigeria's economy contracted by 6.1% year on and year on in the second quarter of 2021. And the latest report from Nigeria Statistics Bureau showed 27% of Nigerian labor force, over 21 million Nigerians are unemployed. And when you look at this, they are all youths. The youths are the future of this country and they are unemployed, they have nothing to do. They are battling seriously with poverty. Now, the World Bank predicts that Nigeria is set for its worst recession in four decades. And the 6.1% decline is also Nigeria's steepest in the last 10 years. So with the drop in all prices, government revenues fell from an already low 8% GDP in 2019. They projected 5% in 2020, but it was even more, and then it's worse in 2021. The pandemic leads to fall in private investment. Private investors have fled. They are no longer there. The fact, no more factories. The factories are not working. The installation is more or less like that. And outside the loss of life, the COVID-19 shock alone projects to push about 5 million more. The implications, we now look at the post-pandemic predictive significance to Nigeria because this is the core issue we want to deal with, having gone through the consequences of pandemic. The implication for democracy and the true independence of Africa depend on the future of Africa. To have the ability to produce their own vaccine for any kind of pandemic diseases, not just COVID-19. The pandemic has taught us solitary, lockdown, home offices, homeschooling, home religious-based activities, and most critically, the benefits of local institutions like the government. government. Nigeria has 774 local governments, but they are not autonomous in reality. So they need to give them autonomy from the various states to be able to operate on in that for the people's welfare. The local governments are more connected to the people than even the state, not even to talk about the federal government, which is some of them are not even touch or know what the federal government is doing or what it's all about. The federal government should aid the local government towards the recovery from the pandemic associated problems and the earlier endemic poverty of the communities. Industrialization should be concentrated more within the local government. Majorly, the security structure must favor state and community policing. Nigeria has a centralized police force, which is terrible. We need local policing. We need state policing. And these are the people that the, uh, the, the, the people might really reach out to and who know the community who could help out and save guide lives and properties when there are problems. So the significance of pandemic COVID-19 is in providing adequate security, good sanitation, safe drinking water, availability of food, and accommodation for the people at community levels. You can imagine this photograph. Abuja is the capital of Lagos. I mean, I'm sorry. Abuja is the capital of Nigeria. And you still have some Abuja community drinking from dirty stream. This photo credit is from legit.ng. This is what we are talking about and it's bad. So they need safe drinking water. The findings and conclusion of this paper, the agitator for secession are thriving because there's no sense of inclusiveness. The Southwest where I come from, they want to separate from Nigeria. The Southeast are drumming the same drum. They want to go away from Nigeria. And this is happening because the current president, Mohamed Mouari, is nepotistic. In all his appointments, top offices in Nigeria, top institutional officers, they all belong to only one single ethnic group, the Fulani. 
And when you talk about insecurity, you see the same Fulani as men that are giving this insecurity in most of the communities from north to south, to east, to west. And none of them has been adequately pro, uh, prosecuted up to today. So the nepotism of the federal government is giving a lot of people to agitate that, no, this is an only marriage. Let us separate, let's go our various way. So in order to err from what I discovered in the 1999 constitution is lopsided towards the north and must be discarded. A new constitution will probably guarantee a quality of multi-ethnic multi setting, unity and equity of all citizens, irrespective of their ethnic background and religious affiliation. I know in the times of Papa Obafemi Awolowo, he, he spoke about egalitarian society. And that is what Nigeria needs to have an egalitarian society. The security architecture, centralization and revenue generation has been a disservice to the development of that country since the return to democracy in 1999. And the country needs to embody the centralized economic and political power system in the exclusive list and put it in the concurrent list to accelerate development and healthy competition to the 774 local government system. Nigerians need to build a culture of tolerance, trust, and dialogue in inter-ethnic and inter-religious issues. Nigeria needs ethical leadership. Ethical leadership will not be nepotistic. If we want to treat all ethnic groups the same, and we need good governance. The advocacy of this paper and recommendations, women beings should expand their capacity for qualities like love, empathy, justice, peace, and harmonic existence. The paper advocates for a change of mind to make Nigerians think nationally rather than ethnically, which is done now. And if religious influences should be underplayed, you will discover that the rights and privilege of Nigeria religious conflicts will drastically reduce. Significantly, for post-pandemic stability, the government must enact comprehensive anti-terrorism legislation, create jobs for the youths, the unemployed one. These are the builders of for tomorrow, the future of our country, and they must fund research to produce vaccines. They must fund education. The kind of budget for education is too low to be able to do anything for those institutions. Nigeria is ripe for decentralized government, which can be modulated and controlled in phases. A lot of people are agitated for restructuring. And I think personally that restructuring is the best for a viable Nigeria. But most importantly, Nigerians need transformation of arts and minds. Some of the references are here listed that we could go through them. There are many. I said I was going to talk about the Kobalus Yoruba land. Money has been idolized by a lot of people. And in most of priorities of life, they are putting money first. In Yoruba land of the old days, before we became Nigeria, money is like number six. There are five essential, crucial ones that are before money. And the very first one is Lakaye which we call the application of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The number two is integrity. Someone with integrity is a man or woman who of their words. Integrity goes hand in hand with character. It goes hand in hand with honesty. And that is why integrity in anything is this is next to wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The third one is Aki Konju Aki. We call it Velo. That is why in, in, in the Yoruba we have Balu groups, which is like they are second in command to the leaders. The Yorubas are no cowards. They believe in courage. You must have courage. And then the fourth one is Anishelakpa Kishi Ole. You must have visible means of livelihood. 
A pastor must be identified with something, a livelihood. If you bring in millions or trillions, which are a lot of people, and you cannot show visible means how you get that money, they will just call you thief only. That means you have stolen that money and your riches or your wealth means nothing to a Yoruba man because you must show evidently how that money has been made or how all those riches and wealth have been accumulated. And the E.G. honor, Yoruba people place a premium on the gate of individuals who carry themselves with honor. And that's why Yoruba usually have an adage that if you go out to seek for wealth and riches and you meet honor on the way, then go back home. Because whoever has honor will definitely be rich and wealthy. And then comes Owo. So putting money ahead of the other is not. And these are the core values that are in the AIKS. And if this core value are integrated into the post-pandemic Nigeria, you will find out that the corruption will be something of the past. And Nigerians, we have transformed art and mind, and we not want to be corrupt. So I thank you for listening. I will be ready to take any questions that I will answer. There are more that I could not say within these 15 minutes, but they are all in my paper. Thank you for listening.